Uh, once again, uh, dear students, very good morning to you all. And uh, today uh, uh, I will discuss on uh, the topic which is very uh, important and this is uh, related to the uh, solid state physics. And uh, I think uh, we have a previous discussion on the uh, structure of the crystals and how we can evaluate the properties of the crystals. In the same continuity, uh, I would like to discuss uh, with very few experimental setups, which is very important to evaluate the uh, properties of the material. When we are talking about the material, it means we are considering the property of the crystals. Because in a microscopic level, we always deal with the crystals and the ar good arrangement of the atoms. As you well aware about that, what are the crystals and what are the amorphous? We are not. Uh, I am not uh, going to the detail of the um, microscopic properties of the crystal here, because the topic is very, very, uh, much, very much related to the experimental determination. In this topic, I will uh, give you insight how we can uh, determine the properties of the crystal or the property of the material. Okay. So uh, the topic of today is uh, the experimental determination of the elastic constants. Now. Uh, if we start from the beginning of the subject, that is ultrasonic entity as a material characterization. You know, ultrasonic uh, is a very versatile tool, and I think uh, you all aware about the ultrasonic waves. Uh, this type of uh, ultrasonic deals with the acoustics over the human hearing waves, and having the frequency uh, is limit to 20 kilohertz. And you can say 20,000 hertz also. Now, uh, the ultrasonic waves are not sensed by the human ear. As I think you all are aware about this to the limitations on the reception of the vibration of the higher frequency and energy by the membrane. So, this is a limitation that we cannot hear the uh, this type of frequency uh, which is generated by the particular instrument. So, very few uh, biological uh, uh, agents which can hear the this type of frequency like just uh, some dolphins and uh, bats and other things. Ultrasonic waves exhibit all the characteristic properties of sound. So we can say this is the uh, waves, uh, these are the waves which can uh, accumulate the all uh, fundamental property which having already in sound. But for the human capacity is not uh, in that range that we can hear it. This wave can be reflect off with very small surfaces having much shorter wavelength because uh, they have a very higher frequency so obviously uh, they have uh, very less uh, wavelength it means they have a very smaller wavelength so, but their nature just like a sound sound needs a medium the, that that is the fundamental need of sound waves they always need uh, they always need to or need of a medium to propagate from one end to another end the same here the sound waves reflect from any surfaces either any membrane any other types of that doesn't matter of the uh, how much thickness or thinness of the surfaces but it shows a very uh, fundamental property that it reflect back when it is strike on the surfaces it is a very uh, it, um, it is the property that makes ultrasound useful for the non destructive this reflection property of uh, ultrasound makes uh, the ultrasonic waves that we can use it as a non-destructive. I have already, if you have remembered that, I have already talked about the NDT techniques in my first lecture on uh, uh, spectroscopy, how we can use the spectroscopy as a non-destructive tool to determine the biological material. Here, I am talking about the how we can use ultrasonic waves to determine the elastic constants. You know, where the elastic constant, those are concerned with the some um, elastic properties of the material. So we are using the ultrasonic uh, waves here to determine the elastic properties of the material. It is the property that makes ultrasound useful for the non-destructive. We have already told you the fundamental property uh, by which we can use the ultrasonic or sound waves uh, as a non-destructive tools. That is the it uh, it 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 it, is a, it having a re reflection nature. Okay, the property of reflection shows the sound, so we can use the property for evolution of the non-destructive in, in in the case of non-destructive testing. 
it uh, characterizing testing material the knowledge of uh, generation detection waves and uh, characters is more important to uh, precise the suitable applications so it depends on the individual how the ultrasonic waves uh, he uh, used in the, his observations and how it can be implemented to determine the uh, characteristics of various characteristics generally we are talking here the mechanical mechanical properties or uh, sound acoustic properties of the material now what are the source uh, of the uh, ultrasonic waves generally we have a source that uh, uh, generated by the mechanical electrostatics electrodynamics electromagnetic magnetostructic effects and piezoelectric and laser methods we have a lot of uh, sources nowadays that by which we can generate the ultrasonic waves and uh, the applications the configuration of different different instrumentation is different different so it's a um, matter of research that on which particular material having the uh, requirement of such type of, uh, of um, acoustic bench uh, by which we can uh, implement the or propagate the ultrasonic waves uh, inside the material so the different different setups is required as per the individual studies but we have a lot of uh, uh, source by which you can generate the uh, acoustics of the ultrasonics mechanical method uh, just we have already told you that galton whistle methods is initial method for generation of the ultrasonic waves this is the galton and whistle methods that is a very primary method by which you can uh, by uh, which they can, they have produces the ultrasonic frequencies uh, this mechanical uh, shock is the friction for the generation in the wave frequency range of 100 k 100 kilohertz to 1 megahertz this is the primary instruments by which we can generate uh, the frequency between uh, this particular values a higher frequency of ultrasonic waves that is uh, 10 to the 20000 megahertz can be generated uh, using the electrostatic methods uh, by which uh, we can um, uh, by which we can apply the electrostatic impulse in the material and uh, particular attenuation will be provided by the instrument uh, manufacturers uh, by which you can use the um, that particular setup for uh, generating the ultrasonic waves now the most common methods to generate the pi uh, um, ultrasonic wave that is a piezoelectric method uh, i think uh, you have a little bit idea about the piezoelectric wave when we uh, apply the stress and it uh, uh, the stress convert into the electrical signals that is particular the piezoelectric methods and in general way piezoelectric effects we can s see in your daily uses just like a gas lighter we you just press the button and it uh, supply the charges that is a basic fundamental behind the piezoelectric but here for uh, producing the ultrasonic waves we use the reverse piezoelectric effects by which we can impulse the um, uh, electrical signals then it produce the stress waves so this is the it is just uh, opposite of the piezoelectric wave so for generating the electro uh, um, ultrasonic waves we have to um, uh, we have to uh, you know we have to determine the reverse piezoelectric we have to apply the reverse uh, piezoelectric method by which we can generate the ultrasonic waves now this is the I have, this is the picture i have taken from one research paper by which they have uh, characterized the some elastic constants by using this setup and generally uh, for the material characterization we can we have a different different setups but uh, i will give you insight of this setup you can see uh, in this picture we have a generator of uh, electrosonic waves and uh, in this uh, these are the two transistors i have mentioned already in these pictures and uh, this is the calibration reference bar you know the calibration reference bar suppose we have to determine the uh, uh, some we have to propagate uh, the ultrasonic uh, waves inside the material any type of crystal but before that we have to calibrate the instruments and uh, it depends on the study by which types of uh, which types of material you are using which types of crystals you are using so for the different types of crystals you have to different use of the different calibration reference bar but here uh, i think that that is a, some steel bar uh, uh, the researcher have uh, have been used this uh, uh, steel bar for the as, as a calibration reference bar but these are the two transducers. One side uh, you have a transmitters, and second uh, you have a receivers. It means from one side, from one end, you have to propagate the ultrasonic waves, and that's the second of the bar, second end of the bar. You have considered here bar, but you can take as a material, any material, any type of material. You can take as a iron, you can take as a 
you can take it as you, you can take it uh, steel you can take as um, you know uh, any biological material which is in the form of solid or liquid sometime you can but here we are using the solid material uh, now from one end you have to propagate the ultrasonic uh, waves and at the second end you have to receive the ultrasonic wave now this is the basic setup for determining for propagating of the ultrasonic waves inside the material now the method is uh, on the basis of the mode of propagation there are four types of ultrasonic velocities as a longitudinal shear surface and lamp wave velocity longitudinal and shear wave velocities are more important for the material characterization because they are well related to elastic constant and density so in particular in uh, the picture which i have sold uh, i have already showed you uh, uh, in that particular pictures um, they have already the um, uh, Researchers have already done the propagation of the waves in the longitudinal shear because they have very well uh, correlated with the um, density uh, of the material and elastic constant. However, it is independent of frequency of the wave and dimension of the given material. So, the this uh, two parameters we have very uh, uh, important for the concept level of prop wave propagation. The mechanical behavior and, and, and isotropic properties of material can be well defined by the knowledge of ultrasonic velocity. So this is the key points uh, by which uh, you can you, you will have a little bit idea on the experimental determinant velocity constants because the anisotropic properties also considerable and also can be evaluated by the ultrasonic wave velocity because you know the anisotropic uh, it means uh, very um, if you are considering some crystal from uh, from the biological material they have an anisotropic in nature and isotropic they have a different properties in different directions so when we uh, propagate the ultrasonic waves in a radial directions they have a different velocity we get the different velocity when you propagate the ultrasonic waves in a tangential direction they all again we get a different uh, velocity so we, it means we can also determine the anisotropic nature of the material using the ultrasonic velocity as per their difference velocity in the different directions okay now how when once you have, we get a velocity when we propagate the ultrasonic waves inside the crystal it means we get some velocity and now how the velocity can be correlated with the elastic constants as you have already i think uh, it, these are very basic fundamentals uh, which we have already discussed um, uh, many times earlier but here again we have discussed once we have get a, a velocity of the ultrasonic waves inside the material then we can correlate that velocity because we have already know that what are the elastic constants in the terms of elastic constant we have a modulus of rupture we have modulus of we have poisson ratios we have elastic moduli all these features uh, is very correlated and very you know uh, these these parameters are very uh, these are these parameters are very uh, identified parameters for uh, for for the evaluating the eastern properties of the material or crystal you can say so uh, as far as the elasticity, elastic components or elastic constants are concerned, then the velocity of ultrasonic wave of kind can be determined from the elastic moduli, that is the Young modulus. But before propagating the ultrasonic waves inside the crystal, we have to uh, calculate the density of that particular crystal. So once we have calculated the density of the particular material, then we propagate the ultrasonic waves. Then using this formula, I think uh, you, you may noted here, but this. Uh, if, if, if this is not clear here, uh, I will give you a reference that you can uh, search uh, in your book that what is the relation between the velocity and the large, uh, young modulus using the uh, Newton's formula. So this is this is general descriptions here uh, as per the Newton's formula, the velocity of ultrasound, the velocity of sound inside the material, inside the solid, inside the liquid or inside the gas. I think you have already done it in your previous classes or previous courses. But once again, you can recapitulate, for, uh, recapitulate all those parameters, how the velocity is correlated to the medium, either we are taking the liquid, either we are taking the solid and uh, any gases material. So all these parameters once calculated, we have a need, we have a density and the, we have a velocity. So on the basis of their density and, and on the basis of velocity, we can calculate the all these parameters. Either those are Young modulus, either those are the Poisson ratio, either those are elastic modulus. Even we can correlate the modulus of velocity, we can correlate the modulus of rupture, we can call it the five stress elastic limit. All these parameters we can evaluate it only uh, 
uh, if we have a two parameters, one is a one is a, a, a velocity of the ultrasonic waves, and the second is the density of the material. So this is the experimental setup, and how this is the experimental setup for determination of the elastic constant. Here I have to um, give you a brief insight on the ultrasonic waves, but this non-district testing is not limited only with the ultrasonic waves. Any window of the um, uh, electromagnetic spectrum can use as a uh, uh, non-destructive tools for determining the either those are the physical as well as the mechanical and as well as the chemical properties of the material. So this this is the very uh, important uh, you know this is the very important uh, uh, topic in the solid state physics and I hope you enjoy this topic and. Uh, uh, I hope uh, I assure you that uh, my my uh, this little talk give you an insight uh, to uh, explore a new horizon how the uh, ultrasonic how the other windows of the electromagnetic spectrums can be evaluated the properties of the crystals. So thank you very much and once again I hope that you all are fine with your dear ones and I hope you will continue your study. Thank you very much.